So today we're going to demonstrate how to file a public utility case in ECF, electronic case filing. The page that you currently see is advanced search. It's the default landing page for the external user's application. From this page, I'm going to select from the left-hand menu filing. And I'm presented with two options. I can select file new case or file in an existing case. We're going to file a new case. The first step of filing a new case is initiation. We do warn you that once you complete the step, you cannot go back and must start the filing over. By selecting the program area and docket type and moving to the next step, it sets what reliefs are available, what document types are available based on these prior selections. So it's important to make sure that as a user, I select the correct division and docket type in this initiation step. I'm gonna select public utility with the docket type of PUD. With PUD cases, you're also required to select the utility type, and we're gonna file a rate adjustment case today, so I'm going to select electric for the utility and move forward to the next step. This is the relief step. Based on those prior selections of program area, the docket type, and electric, the relief list is filtered and I'm going to select rate adjustment. You'll notice that this is a multi-select drop-down list, and if I needed to select more than one relief if it were applicable, uh, I could do that, but this particular example, we're just gonna select rate adjustment today. And with all public utility cases, this relief saw as it appears on the application field is a required field, and you will copy the caption on your application to paste in that field. So now that I've copied my caption into that field, I'm going to select Next. On this step, I'm going to add the party to the case, and I'm gonna select the Add Party button. I'm gonna search for a party. ECF has been loaded with uh, customer information from prior uh, cases that will exist and live on in ECF. So this particular uh, example, I'm going to use Empire and select Search. And I find that uh, entity. I can select that entity and add them as the party to my case. If I did perform a search and there were no results, then I can use this Create Party button and complete a form to add a a uh, entity or a party to the ECF database um, to select uh, for the case that I'm filing. So I'm gonna select this uh, party and I'll be required to also select the party type. In this uh, demonstration, we're gonna select applicant and save that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step of documents. At any point in time, um, that I'm in this filing process. I can go back and forth between these steps if I need to, all except for that first initiation step that again sets reliefs and documents. So um, if I had made a mistake and selected the wrong uh, party on the prior step, I would be able to modify that. I can see the list of the parties that I've added to the case so far on this document step. Um, you know, I'm filing a new case, so uh, it's likely that the party that I set on that first step will be the party that I select here. But whenever I file in an existing case, if I'm not the party that's already been added to a case, I could use this add party option and that would allow me to search for and select the appropriate uh, party or create the appropriate party. So once I have selected the party that I'm filing the document on behalf of, then I'm going to select this main document button Whenever I select this main document button, it uh, opens up the window that uh, will allow me to upload my document. Uh, notice that we do have a caution and a redaction notice. Um, do make sure that you have redacted any private information from documents before you upload those to ECF. You must acknowledge that redaction notice and then select Browse and navigate um, to where that is saved out on your computer and select the document and then open. Whenever it uploads the document, it is validating that the correct file type, uh, file size, and doing a virus scan. The document must be a PDF. And once I have uploaded my document, I'm going to select the document category. 
um, whenever you select the document category, the document types are filtered by the category. So if I were to select appearances, the appropriate documents for that category would appear. Um, we're filing a new case, so I'm going to look for the initiating documents category, and then I will see the documents for this division, docket type, and relief type that I've selected. So today I'm going to go ahead and file the notice of intent to file on application and if I had a document title, I can input that document title. That does help for searching for documents uh, in ECF, in the advanced search. I'm going to go ahead and upload this. So if I did upload this and I noticed that I had selected the incorrect document, I do have the ability to edit or delete this step. Again, if I needed to go back and modify the prior steps, I'll be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and select Next. And I'm at the review step of filing a new case. And on this step, it recaps the activity that we've completed so far. We filed this case for the Empire District. Um, Rebecca Smith is our filer. The filing fee for this case will be $100 and it recaps the document that we have uploaded. Uh, I do get a warning that you can, no, you can no longer modify this once I submit, so you just want to review this information carefully before you select the pay and submit. Whenever I select pay and submit, I'm going to be redirected to the credit card portal to input the, filing, uh, the payment for the filing fee. Uh, again, you just have one more opportunity to back out and uh, modify anything if you need to. So on this, I've been redirected to the credit card portal. It is going to inform us that this is a $100 filing fee for the PUD docket. It does also inform us that there is a non-refundable service fee of $3 for this transaction. And I'm required to input some basic information to complete this transaction. The required fields are notated by the asterisk here. Notice that it's highlighted green once I've completed the required fields and I can move to the next step. On this step, uh, again, a recap of the transaction summary. This is where I'm going to input my credit card information. Again, the required fields are notated by the asterisk. And once I've completed the required fields, those are highlighted green in this credit card portal, and then I'm going to select the next. And at this point, this is recapping the information that I've put in. We've got our transaction summary again. I do suggest that you print this page. This will be documentation that you are paying this filing fee if you intend to rebuild this filing fee and the non-refundable service fee uh, for this transaction. So once I submit this, this is going to process our credit card payment. and we're redirected back to ECF. So I'm redirected back to ECF, and this is kind of uh, like the receipt for filing this case. I'm provided with my case number and recap again the activity that's happened today, the case name, who it was filed on behalf of and by, uh, the docket text, the docket entries that result from the activity uh, that we've completed today, and because Rebecca Smith is an Oklahoma attorney that is a registered ECF user. She is automatically added to the service list for this case. Um, she will receive an electronic notification via email of the transactions that she's completed in ECF today. Um, any future uh, entry of appearances would need to be filed to be added to the service list of this case. I'm going to go ahead and select the link to the case so we can take a look at what the case looks like once it has been filed. So I've selected that link. I'm in the uh, external view of the case, and I'm uh, provided with the case number, the filing date, uh, the program area, the docket type, uh, the party to the case, 
I have details of the case, like the utility that we selected, the relief that we selected, and the caption or the relief sought on the uh, uh, of the uh, case. And you'll notice that this is a multi-tabbed environment, so I can also look at the service list tab. And this is a recap of the attorney and who they represent, or any other parties or attorneys that might be added um, to the parties and service list of the case. I also can look at the docket of the case, which is the activity. Um, so we have the uh, notice of intent to file an application. Um, this is a link to the document. I can select that. We'll do that in just a moment. I have the financial transactions that also resulted. We had an invoice that was created with the $100 filing fee and a receipt for our payment. So I'm going to go ahead and select the document. And so the document was automatically file stamped whenever I submitted this case. You'll notice that included in the file stamp is the docket type, the case number, the docket entry number it relates to, and the uh, date that it was filed. You also have page numbering. This is page one of 10. Um, this is based on an actual case, so you'll see the old version of the file stamp here. Um, we just wanted to use realistic documents in this demonstration today. But if I scroll to the next page, you'll notice that that file stamp is repeated with the uh, page number, and that would be repeated on each page of the document. So I'm gonna go back to the case. Um, I do wanna point out that if there is a document that is uh, uploaded to this case, been filed in this case, that we do have a download documents button. And with this button, it downloads a zip file of all the documents that are uh, added to this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that. We only have the one in this instance, but if you had multiple documents, it would download all those documents at one time. So this is the zip file. It includes the division and docket type and the case number with the docu document name that we filed. And it would have all those documents if, that, uh, if there were additional documents that had been filed. So you can also print a docket list whenever you're in a case. This is a report of the activity. That recaps some of the same common information, our service list, and that activity. The final tab that will be in the case will be events. Whenever a hearing is scheduled, um, that is an event, and that information would appear on the events tab. So that's filing a PUD electric rate adjustment case. Thank you.